If you want to be a top player in today's game, you better become a tennis athlete. I'm Pat Doherty at the Boletary Tennis Academy in Bradenton, Florida, and joining me is Vanit Nuran, a full-time student at the Academy. We're going to demonstrate a few ways you can evaluate yourself on critical areas of tennis athleticism, the maneuvers that are so specific to tennis and important to every point you play, starting with the understanding of your athletic foundation. I want to see if the player has an understanding of how to engage themselves athletically. What I mean by that is, can they establish a foundation that supports them, provides stability, even under the stresses and forces of changing directions and first step reaction. So the first thing I want to do is say, Vanit, show me your ready reaction position, otherwise known as what we call it the athletic foundation. Not too bad. Now the key elements that I'm looking for here is, is he wide enough in his base? He's about two shoulder widths apart right now, maybe a little shy of that. That could get a little bit wider. From this angle here, does he look balanced? Does his chest look up? Does he look like he have, has good posture? From this angle now, the camera's going to show the definite angles here. The hips are set back, there's angles in the knees, and when you engage your body down like this, he's about six inches lower than standing height right now, all the muscles start to activate and support the skeletal structure. The hip position's key here. If and I push on these hips, they should be rather tight. And notice he was able to lock them in place and get them tight. When I push on the shoulders, nice and firm here. I don't feel a spongy quality in the back. So this is a pretty strong foundation he's showing me here. If he broadened his footwork a little bit wider, it will get easier on his knees. It won't put so much stress here right above the knees, but instead it'll utilize more of the glutes and the muscles around the hip area. So that's a good solid technique. Now, he knows what we're looking for. Pop up, put your feet together. The first test I'm going to do now, after I've stress tested to see if its structural integrity is sound, I want him to show me that this is a habit for him. So I'm going to have him go and pop down into this position and come right back up ten times. You ready? Set, go. One, two, three, and four, and five and six, and seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good. Hop up. So he should be able to find that position and be able to repeat it exactly the same every time. When we do our dart fish analysis here at the Academy, we'll actually take and put graphics or drawings and lines. Once he's in that position that he considers to be his foundation, we're going to outline those angles with the graphics and then when he does the 10 repetitions he should be hitting those marks very well. Very nice. Let's go to the second part of our assessment. Our second assessment is the first step reaction. One of the most challenging things on the tennis court is to go from at rest into motion. You want to be lightning quick on the tennis court to get from at rest into motion. So we want to first test this and then work on improving his first step reaction. For this test, we've got the video frame closely around his entire body. We're going to look and see what's the last part of his body to leave the frame of video as it sits still on the tripod. Vanit is going to react to one of these two balls that I hold out to the side here. If I drop the right one, he's going to go laterally to his left. If I drop the left one, he's going to go laterally to his right from at rest into motion as quickly as he can. We want to see what the technique is and we want to see on the little counter how quickly he gets out of frame. Are you ready? So we got the two balls. On your mark, get set, go. Now what you'll notice there is his footwork was very close together and his center of gravity or his hips were very high up off the ground. That's where a lot of kids like to react from. And what that's going to tend to lead to is the slowest first step reaction. What you saw there is his right foot went out of frame first. That should actually be the last thing that leaves the frame. That's the technique we're looking for. And we're going to prove to him it's faster by comparing the times between the incorrect technique and the faster technique. Let's do it again. This time, I'm going to put him in a better athletic foundation to make him sharper on that first step reaction. Broadened the base out, got him down already, and now let's see if that right foot is the last thing to leave the frame. On your mark, get set, and go. 
and there it was. So you could see the right foot will be the last thing to leave the frame. For those players who are a little slower getting started off first step reaction, the right foot would tend to be the first thing out of frame. So in doing this drill, you want a true reaction. You can go right, left, alternate it so the players don't know exactly what direction they're going to have to move, and you'll get a truer evaluation of what their first step reaction is really all about. For the more advanced players, when you watch the top players play, you'll see a lot of times when they're moving laterally on the baseline, all of a sudden they'll elevate like this. That elevated split step, as I call it, is timed right with the contact point of the opponent. Again, as I said before, it's more difficult to go from rest into motion. So what the players at the top have figured out is, don't let yourself get down into the rested position too much. Once your body's down like this for too long, it wants to stay there and it's harder to get you going again. So what they've learned to do is do an elevated split and if they come down and by the time they've landed, they already know what direction they're going. If the player has to move to their left, they're gonna come down right left and out of frame. If the player has to move to their right, while they're still in midair, they have already read and recognized what direction they're gonna move and if it's to the right, they're gonna come down left, right. Okay, so we're testing the elevated split reaction now. Now to do the elevated split reaction correctly, we're going to give them a timing of three, two, one, then I'll drop one of these balls. If he's moving to his backhand, which is off to his left, his right foot will be the first to come down. And when that right foot comes down, it's gonna push that upper body going this way. He's gonna do his hardest driving off the inside leg then. Here we go, are you ready? Three, two, one, drop. And notice he came down right left, and that was perfect. Got him into motion very quickly. Again, he's gonna do the exact opposite. If I drop this ball out here, he's gonna come down left, right. Three, two, one, go. So what's really important here is that when you see the ball dropping, we can see how quickly he's responding to the ball as soon as it comes out of my hand. One of the areas where you can lose a lot of time, even if you're very quick, is to be slow to react to the gun. Imagine a very slow race with five sprinters only running 10 feet, which is about the distance we have to run most of the time to get to tennis balls. If you were late off the starting gun, I don't care if you're faster than all four of those other runners, you're probably still gonna finish last in a short race. So again, you have to be motivated to move. Don't look to stand still hoping the ball comes to you. You gotta look to move to be a good tennis player covering the entire court. For more information on how to become a better athlete on the tennis court, go to apbelt.com.